I guess you won't need a much of a motivational speech to get these guys up for this game. No, there'll be. <clears throat> there's no motivation needed. Yeah. I don't. I don't need to talk much about that. There's zero motivation needed to play this game. Um, yeah, none. We're excited to play it. We'll pour everything that we have into it, just like we have the last few weeks. Um, but this is a team right now with a lot of confidence, a lot of momentum that is enjoying playing football. We're getting better. We need to still get better. There'll be no motivation needed this week. The O-line kind of took a lot of hit for that game last year, you know, with Phil getting hurt and everything. That, is that chip on the shoulder still there? You know, the, the, it's a lot. They I think, took a lot of bloody noses last year. The O-line took a lot, of, a lot of bloody noses throughout the season last year. Um, this is a new group. This is a new team. This is a new O-line. And I think that, I mean, what did we rush for 308 yards last week? We rushed for 320 the week before. I think we were averaging rushing for 60 yards a game last year. And back-to-back -back weeks, we've run for over 300 yards. So this is a totally different offensive line. It's a totally different quarterback. It's a totally different offensive scheme. This is a different team that, this is a different offense that played UConn last year and the rest of the teams that we played. Could you flash back a little bit just how you first discovered Thomas, what the recruiting process was like and how he ended up here? Uh, yeah. Um, I think it was obviously he went into the portal and I'm not sure if it was Coach Wyatt or, or um, who brought him in. I remember watching a highlight film of him. Um, from several games that he played in last year. And I kind of got a smile on my face and said, yeah, I mean, this, this kid's dynamic. You didn't see him throw very much, but you saw, <clears throat> you saw some really incredible runs, like big time runs and speed. And then when you did see him throw the ball, he was sitting in the pocket and it looked like it came out pretty good. Um, and then um, we had him up on an official visit and you just kind of, He's got a great personality. If you guys spent much time with him now, I mean, he's probably still quiet around the media as he's getting to know you guys. I mean, again, he's, he's a young guy, um, but really enjoyed, enjoyed him on our official. And then he told me he was coming, and obviously I was thrilled. And at that point, you know, didn't really know much else about him other than he was a dynamic athlete. I went back and watched his high school tape, which was dynamic. Um, didn't really start to see him throw the football until training camp. And that, that's what I've talked to you guys about. And then you really started to see what he could be. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that he's here. He's a great kid and he's getting better every week. And I think you saw last week, we kind of tailored the pass game and some of the stuff a little bit more for him um, and certainly the run game. And then from then, you know, training camp until now, just how can you kind of describe how his ascension has mirrored the team's ascension, how he's kind of you know, taken the team under his wing a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I just think he adds one, he adds a whole different dimension to the offense when you, you not only have to defend a really good offensive line, a good scheme, some good wideouts in a run game, but the element of the quarterback keeping the ball, whether it's a design quarterback run or, or him actually dropping back and throwing the ball and keeping things alive and then all of a sudden scrambling around. He's shown he can stay in the pocket. The one play against Georgia Tech, I felt like he was there for about 20 seconds and he just stood there. I mean, there was no look at, he just stood there calmly and he's starting to do that more and more. Um, he brings a lot of energy. He brings a lot of juice and he brings confidence. And, you know, I think again, you saw that start to happen in the Florida State game where he looked way different than he did week one and week two. He's a totally different player than he was week one and week two. He hadn't played. And now he's just getting better and better. And I just, I think you're starting to see he doesn't get rattled. The guys believe in him. They believe we can score every time we have the ball. He's having more fun with the guys. He's becoming one of them. He just hasn't been here for very long yet, you know? Um, but he's a humble guy who he's always in the office. Um, and he's just, he's also maturing a lot. And you can really start to see that, which is cool for a young guy in such a short period of time. So we just, we just gotta keep him going. You mentioned tailoring the offense around, you know, getting him involved and, and items like that. <clears throat> How much of the tailoring do you have to do over the course of the season to your personnel in general, like defensively even? If you, I know you talk about guys coming in and out rotating on the defensive line, but where does the kind of tailoring happen away from an offense around a quarterback? you got to tailor constantly. Um, guys get injured. Uh, who's your next guy up? Is he better in zone coverage or man coverage, right? Um, if you have a corner go down and you need to throw someone else in, whether it's strengths, whether it's weaknesses, same thing at linebacker. Um, we got enough in our arsenal where we got to base it around what our players do well. And sometimes it takes time to figure out which players do well as you see them playing live games, especially when they're new or they're young. And so it happens at all positions is what is, what does Kai do better than the other backs, 
right? And how, how do you know when you, you find out when you start to see what he can do? Is he a better downhill runner? Obviously, he's a bigger guy than maybe Broom, right? So certain plays you want to call Broom in versus Kai in versus Cam Barfield in or Pat Garwo in or you got to put your players in the best position to succeed. And as you go throughout the season, you start to figure it out. And it's our job as coaches to do that. Coach, when you look at the kind of landscape of the ACC, <clears throat> South Florida State, it's wide open right now for the most part. Have you allowed yourself to even think about what could be down the road? Or is it just all kind of walked in right now? No, the, the thing that I've learned with this team is it's just we won last game and now we got to go 1-0 and this week. And... And I say it, I mean, it's such coach cliche, and you guys have all heard it, but it's just the truth. I mean, you can't look too far ahead. You can't look behind. And that's the world we live in. I mean, win or lose, you got to figure it out and give everything you have. And you got, you got a week to prepare. And Saturday, you got to go play. And that's what we're going to do. Um, and I told the team, we've done that for three weeks in a row. If you continue to do that and stack them up and just keep your head down and keep working, we'll look up at the end and see where it puts us. But you start doing that and you'll go backward. Facing another New England team this weekend, just in terms of recruiting, is this sort of a statement game for you guys as well? Um, no, nah, I'm not sure on that. I don't know how much we've recruited against them, to be honest with you. And I'm not saying that as a, yeah. as a shot at all. I mean, they've recruited players. We've recruited players. I, they've obviously recruited some really good ones. Um, but I'm not sure... Um, I'm not sure. I, I like playing regional games. I think it's great. I think it's great for the region. Um, and, and I've always said that when you've asked me that question. I figured you'd ask me that one today. You're the big regional guy. Um, but I think it's great to play these regional games. I'm glad we get to play them at home this time. Coach, I want to go back to Amari's pick six. Yep. Because um, he said he wasn't going for the interception. The ball just kind of stuck to his hip. Uh, he was going for the PBU. From a, from a defensive back standpoint, the technique of hand placement when you see a guy coming in versus trying to tackle. Um, what kind of goes into even a play like that where he makes the decision to put his hand out as opposed to just trying to hit the guy or, or break up the pass? Like, because I feel like there's more than, more than just hitting the guy or trying to jump the route. Yeah, I think it's all the position that you're in. In that one, he was in a cutoff angle with his left hand kind of in position to swipe at the ball. And for him to intercept that ball, I mean, he didn't have his right hand available. So usually when you have to go like this and backhand, like glove the ball out, right? <clears throat> you're not going to catch it unless you can just catch it with one hand, which he essentially backhanded it, pinned it to his hip, and caught it. That's a perfect time to get a PBU, not an interception. So, I mean, it was number one on Sports Center for a reason, um, and that's I'm not sure you could replicate that in a drill or teach that. It's just an amazing play that he made. In general, is there part of even taking a cutoff angle where that's part of where he lines up before the snap in a formation, or is that just a matchup? Like, what is he determine what angle to, to, to kind of take on a, on a guy if he's looking at the pass. Yeah, I mean, I think when you talk DB play, it depends what coverage you're in. If you have a safety in the middle of the field and you're protected on an inside release but not an outside release, you cut them off so you stay on top because your safety's not in position to help you. If you have two safeties deep, then you can stay underneath. In that situation, he didn't have a safety over the top, so he cut him off to stay on top and uh, defended the goal ball. So it's really what coverage you in, where the safety's placed, and can you use your safeties to help you within the coverage and play good leverage? One more on the interceptions. Just as a DB guy, how much did that kind of let it fire into you? You know, you guys have one interception in, in all those games coming in, and how did you get three? Yeah, I, it, I think it lit a fire under all the DBs. I mean, I think it lit a fire under our whole team. Anytime you can intercept the ball and score, I mean, it's, it's usually a good momentum swing. Um, you know, I think since, since the Louisville game, we've given up we played much better pass defense, and that's just something we've emphasized. Since the Louisville game, I think we've given up about 180 yards per game, and we've had four interceptions. Um, so we just put an emphasis on those guys playing the ball more and becoming the offense more when they're in position to do so. I felt like earlier in the year, our guys were a little tentative on getting their heads and turning around and trying to play the ball. The, when the ball's in the air, man, you've got to turn and become the offense and go to try to make a play. And then that's what they're starting to do. And with some new guys, it just takes some time and confidence. The whole game plan against Georgia Tech was they were an explosive pass team, one of the most explosive pass teams in the ACC with the quarterback being up there with yards per game and explosive pass plays. So we wanted to we wanted to eliminate their explosive pass plays in that game, and we did. I mean, they threw for, I think, 200 yards, and he was like 44% with three picks. Um, and in doing so, we gave up some runs and had some light boxes. But that was the game plan, and we put a lot on the DBs. And that plus the pressure we put on the quarterback was very effective in winning the game. Um, so credit to the DBs, coaches are, um, and the DB guys. That was, 
That was well played. Coach, I thought Boston Kai Leppard had 54 receiving yards. Uh, just comment on that element of his game. And is he, quote, the proverbial three down back with that skill? He, he has a set to be to play in all three downs because he can protect on third down because he's a bigger back, right? You don't want to put in little backs unless you're just going to cut block a lot. Um, and then he can catch the ball. We've been trying to throw screens to him um, and, and try to get the screen game going more and more. And then on the one, he did a nice job of scrambling down the sideline when Thomas kind of rolled out and yeah. threw it to him. That's just a good job of him understanding the situation where the quarterback was getting open. And he's got good hands. So... Again, he's a young guy who hasn't played much either, so we're starting to see, like you guys were kind of alluding to, what he can do, and he catches the ball really well. Um, and then he's hard to bring down in the open field. Um, so he's got a good skill set. I think he's going to get better and better. Cool. Yeah, go ahead. Every time I look at the uh, defensive stats, John Pupil's either, either one, two, or three every game. Is he just sticking his nose there in the box? Uh, yeah. He, are those defensive tackles downfield? I mean, I think it's both, um, but he's a guy that, I mean, he's relentless to the ball. I mean, he is just flying around, laying out. Um, he's a guy who plays with great effort. He's a good tackler, and he is. He's always around the ball. It's the first thing I did. I flipped to that page, too, and he was number one in tackles for that game. And, he, and we didn't even start him. I mean, we started Victor in the game, so he kind of came in in backup duty and played a lot and led the team in tackles. He's a hard guy to keep off the field because he does everything right, and he plays so hard. Uh, 21 out there in the fourth quarter. How important was it for guys to see what that looked like? Not, yeah, I mean, that was probably the best thing in that game was that we came out in the half and we hit a bit of a lull, but then that didn't rattle them, right? We threw the pick, they scored. It was a one-point game, but it didn't shake us. We, we got better, and we put up 21 unanswered points. And if that game went on, I don't, I don't know if they would have stopped our run. I mean, we kind of pulled back and wasted, I think it was an eight-play drive for about 550-something, and we could have scored again. And I just wanted to run out the clock and take a knee. We were up 15, and I think we would have kept going. Um, we got stronger as the game went on, and you're starting to see that's who we are because our run game is going to wear people down. And in the fourth quarter, you could kind of see the D-line and the defense going backward, and we kept going forward. Um, that was impressive. Just speaking of the run game, in a day and age where it's you know pass, 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 how much pride do you guys take on being able to pound people into the ground right now? We, it's it's how we're going to win games here. Um, it's it's very important to me. You can control the time of possession. You limit the time the other team touches the ball. You play you play good defense. You run the ball, and you'll have a chance to win in the fourth quarter. And if we can do that, we'll wear people out. Uh, but with that, too, I think you're going to see the pass game. It will start to open up explosives because people are going to have to start coming down. Um, rushing for 300 yards in back-to-back -back games, you're not going to see very many light boxes. And then we got to be able to throw it over their head. And that's – we have the people to do that on the outside. And once we can start becoming more efficient at that, then it's really going to open things up. The explosive run plays, which is also what jumped out in that last game, it wasn't just three, four, five. It was, we hit some explosive runs, and not just with Thomas, with Kai, too. And that's probably the biggest thing. You saw some holes that, I mean, I showed the team the team meeting. I mean, there were some holes now that you stop and freeze the film, and you, and you could drive a truck through them. And that's, that's a credit to the offensive line. How much of that was, like, if you go back in time, like being able to run the ball or, like, how, where – did you ever envision that that would be kind of the identity that formed, or was that just kind of something that happened organically? Like, if you go back, even to what you thought the team might become coming into the season. Yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to run the ball. I mean, as a defensive coach, there's nothing worse than when you can't stop the run. I mean, it's just, it's demoralizing, and it changes everything that you have to do. Uh, but you always have to look at your personnel. You know, um, we have a really good offensive line. They're well coached, and we have the people to run it, and we're going to do it. Um, some people believe you, you run the ball to win and you throw the ball to score points. Um, I think each team is different, and you got to figure out what they do best and how they score points best, and that's what we're starting to figure out. And I think in the last three three weeks, we've really done a good job with that. Now we need to keep going forward, um, and that's the biggest key. Whether we're playing UConn this week or whoever we're playing, this team has to get better. We need to coach better. We need to continue to play better. We left plays out there in the Georgia Tech game where I don't even know if it should have been close. Um, and that was my message to the team. Now's not the time to think, great, you want, like, no. That's, it's, if you're really a competitor and you really want to get better, you watch that game and you watch it really close, and it's, that's not good enough. It's not, and I need to get better. And there were certain things I did in the game, and I told the team that weren't good enough and that could have cost us, and I'm going to do better this week. 
and that needs to be their mentality because they'll start to read some things now where people will be saying they're doing that. No, put that away. Don't, don't just – we need to get better in that. We need to run the ball better. We need to stop the run. But we need to do all those things, and that needs to be our mentality. Coach, where's Ryan at right now? Ryan will probably be out again this week, um, and we'll just see right now how he progresses until we get any final word. Will he practice on anything or with a red shirt or anything like that? Um, he was running around a little bit. I'm not sure how much he'll do this week. Okay. Just overall health-wise, how you guys looking? Health-wise, pretty good. Um, I think we came out of that game. I mean, it was a physical game. They were huge up front. I mean, so our guys are sore, um, but we came out of it pretty good. I'll get the injury report from Mike today and have more details on that on Wednesday. All right. All right. Thanks, guys.